Glenn Youngkin has been sworn in as the 74th governor of Virginia. The former private equity CEO is the first Republican in 12 years to take the governor's oath of office in Virginia. He replaces Democratic Governor Ralph Northam. In his first remarks as governor, Youngkin spoke on the expectations to deliver for the people of that state. For the 73rd time in the history of Virginia, the home of American democracy, we're participating in the peaceful and orderly transfer of leadership. The will of the people grants a license to serve, a temporary license extended with trust, with hope, and with expectations to deliver on promises made. Youngkin defeated former Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe by about 63,000 votes in November. In the final months of campaigning, Youngkin pushed education to the forefront. He vowed to expand charter schools, raise teacher pay, and restrict how history is taught in the classroom. To dive deeper into all of this, I want to bring in Carly Haynes, who has been following the swearing-in ceremony. Carly is a reporter with our Charlottesville, Virginia affiliate, WCAV. Welcome, Carly. So tell us, what else did Governor Youngkin say in his inaugural address? So I think one of the major things that we noticed right out of the gate was that unifying message that he gave to both Republicans and Democrats. He said, we're not here as individuals, we're not here as Democrats or Republicans, we're here as Virginians. And I think that's a really important message to pay attention to because now Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin is realizing that he's going to have to appeal to both parties to get things done. And, and that's going to be an important part of getting started uh, during his time as governor. Sure. Well, Democrats still hold a slim majority in the state uh, legislature. So Youngkin's nominations, his agenda might be challenged. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, right. So I think he has made it clear that right out of the gate, he is going to remove vaccination and mask mandates in schools. Now, Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin has made it clear, too, that he has gotten vaccinated himself. He supports people getting vaccinated, but by their own choice. He doesn't support schools and, um, you know, overall businesses enforcing these mandates. And we covered a story about this. And during the campaign, that was a really important point for him. A lot of parents wanted to prevent that learning loss from their children, and I think that's what really propelled him. But now with this surge in the Omicron variant, it'll be really interesting to see uh, what happens uh, with that you know, plea in the General Assembly and in Senate. Yeah. Interesting that because obviously vaccinations have been highly politicized, but given the surge right now of the Omicron variant, is his decision to try and remove mask mandates a popular one there in Virginia? It is not a popular one based on some of the backlash that we've been hearing. We ran a story just yesterday about that decision, and immediately we had some teachers reaching out, and they were scared. Schools are expected to come back this week full force, and I think that that'll be interesting to see really how that plays out. Uh, but, yeah, we've, we've been getting some concerns from our viewers as we've been covering that. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how Youngkin plans to fill out his cabinet. He's nominated Andrew Wheeler as his natural resources secretary. Wheeler was head of the Environmental Protection Agency in the Trump administration. He's also a former lobbyist for the coal industry. What does this tell us about Youngkin's vision for the state government? I think what's really interesting here is to compare it to his campaign. During his campaign, he actually tried to remove himself from President Trump. Right. He wanted to not, yeah, he wanted to appeal to a lot of the other people in his state. And I think that's what's really interesting about this pick because you have somebody who was such a big name under Trump to go in pretty much the equivalent of the state position. And a lot of EPA, former EPA employees, 
were against this decision uh, to nominate this cabinet member. Uh, they they decided that you know this might not be good. They roll he rolled back a lot of these environmental protections, uh, the coal emissions. He he did that under the Trump administration. And I think what's interesting there as well is usually in the Virginia Senate, uh, Governor taps their cabinet appointee, and they, the Senate usually just goes with it. But we'll, what will be interesting is possibly for the first time in a really long time, we might have the Virginia Senate push against this nominee, especially because you have a Democratic majority, mm -hmm. though slim, a majority in the Senate. Hmm. Well, in addition to Youngkin, new Attorney General Jason Mayeres has become the first Latino elected to statewide office. And you also have a new Lieutenant Governor, Winsome Sears. She is the first black woman to hold that title in Virginia. Um, she's also a Republican, given that you know, the state, the Commonwealth, used to be home to the capital of the Confederacy. Tell us a little bit of context. How significant is this? This is incredibly significant uh, for both Sears and Miaris. Uh, I, I think it shows that uh, typically in these African-American communities and Latino communities, people might assume that they're going to vote Democrat. And I think that shows that that's not necessarily the case anymore. Uh, we have UVA Center for Politics here in Charlottesville, and they say, while the state still leans Democrat, I think it goes to show that if you have a good campaign, which we saw with a lot of these nominees now, uh, really anything can happen, and that's pretty telling of when we head into those midterms as well. But this is this is incredibly significant at their ability to appeal to these communities. Um, so it, it was definitely, I think, spiking a lot of energy and enthusiasm within the Republican Party about what's possible. All right, Carly Haynes, thank you. Thank you so much.